Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand NORA and zipper circuits. NORA circuits are nothing but no race. N-O-R-A. No race. It means for or it stands for no race. We'll understand why the name is given as NORA very quickly. Let's first understand the drawbacks faced in dynamic circuits. We already saw in the previous clips that monotonicity or the rising condition is one of the major drawbacks of dynamic circuits. In this clip we are going to see one of the other drawback which is nothing but the race condition. And to avoid this race condition problem we use NORA so it's called no race. Correct? Let's quickly understand this. Here I have shown a dynamic NAND. We already know how to make a dynamic circuit. PMOS, NMOS. NAND means whatever is the pull down of static A in series with B. So this is exactly what I have drawn here and labeled the transistors. So driving under the dynamic NAND is what it's shown on the screen. Let's understand a few cases. So let's start. It's very straightforward. Just pay attention. Case 1. Remember both the dynamic NANDs are operating on the same clock phi and have their inputs given. This is the output. The output of this dynamic NAND is going as an input to the next dynamic NAND and capacitance are given and the nodes I have labeled as X and Y. So case 1 is when phi is equal to 0 that means my P1 is on, my P2 is on, all the NMOSes would be off. So P1 on, P2 on that means my X and Y both would be equal to VDD. So this is my pre-charge phase which is very straightforward. Case 2 when phi goes to 1 that means this P1 goes off, P2 goes off, P1, P2 off and my N3 and N6 both are on. Now let's presume in this case my input A is equal to input B is equal to input C which is equal to 1. So all these three inputs are 1. Okay. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 1 which means N1, N2 and N5 all are on. Now pay attention here. When N1 and N2 are on, we all know that this is on, this is on at the same time N3 is also on. That means all the pull down transistors are on so X should be equal to 0 and that means input to N4 should be equal to 0. However, what happens is we know that there is some delay involved in any transistor, right? Suppose if it's an inverter, this is my input, this is my output. After the input has arrived, let's say 2 nanoseconds is the inverter delay. So after 2 nanoseconds, I will get my output. Similarly, there is some delay. So for X to become 0, let's say after A and B has become 1, it will take some time delay. Let's say for example, 2 nanoseconds. In this 2 nanoseconds, see what's happening here is, at the same time, all the inputs come at the same time, right? So C has also come. And initially, X was pre-charged to 1. Correct? X was pre-charged to VDD. So N4 has also got a 1, which means N4 is on. This is all happening within the 2 nanoseconds till the time X is going to 0. So N4 is on, C is 1, N6 is on, that means Y will go to 0. And now after 2 nanoseconds, even when X becomes 0, this transistor is off, but there is no way where my output can go to VDD unless and until I enter into the pre-charge cycle. Does everyone follow this? So what's happening here is in the evaluation phase where one dynamic circuit is cascaded with another dynamic circuit because there is some delay which is involved due to which a correct output is not being given. So here we see that because of the propagation delay, my output which should go to VDD now, X is equal to 0 and C is equal to 1 for a NAND gate when it's 0 and 1, my output has to go to 1 but Y has already gone to 0 and it cannot go to 1 till the time we enter a pre-charge cycle. So basically we got a corrupted output and this is nothing but the race condition. To avoid this race condition, we studied one logic was nothing but having domino circuits where outside a dynamic circuit we put an inverter and the output of that inverter can be given to another dynamic circuit. So the combination of dynamic plus static inverter was nothing but a domino circuit. The other solution to this problem is nothing but no race circuits or NORA circuits. The NORA circuit uses the principle that till now we used only PMOS transistors for pre-charge, correct? And we used NMOS logic blocks, isn't it? So what does NORA circuit do is, is nothing but we use dynamic logic gates using PMOS transistors. This is what NORA circuit does. There's nothing to get confused, we'll quickly understand. So far what we have done is, 
We have used PMOS transistors only for pre-charge. Here was my n-type logic and then came my footer transistor and this was my output. So here what we did was we were using PMOS only for pre-charge but not for any other logic. What does NORA does is exactly the opposite. It says that why to use PMOS transistors only for pre-charge. Let's use PMOS transistors for logic as well. So what it does is PMOS, this as it is, is put here. In place of N, we use a PMOS logic circuit. We know that output is taken between PMOS and NMOS. So output will be taken here and this is my NMOS, same. So we have replaced N by P here and we have changed the position of our output. And now if we do this, we can easily take our output and give it to the next stage input. We'll quickly see how. Here is what I have drawn, phi. Here, because it's in PMOS stage, we'll use phi bar. The output of N can now go to P as I mentioned. And let's see how this works. Let's take case by case. When phi is equal to zero, let's label all the transistors P1, P2, N1 and N2. When phi is equal to zero, that means P1 is on. That means phi bar is one. That means N2 is on. So P1 and N1 both would be on. That means there is a capacitor present here at the output here as well. P1 will pre-charge the capacitor to VDD and N2 will pre-discharge the capacitor to N2. So when phi is equal to zero, phi bar equal to one, P1, N2 on. First stage output pre-charge to VDD. Second stage output discharge to zero. So when phi is equal to zero, my NMOS stage pre-charges the output and my PMOS stage pre-discharges the output. Very, very clear. Case two, when phi is equal to one, that means phi bar is equal to zero. When phi is equal to one, that means this N1 will turn on and phi bar is zero. That means this P2 is turning on. It's nothing but the evaluate phase where this block will evaluate and produce some output. That output, I beg your pardon here, this connection is wrong. That output can be given as an input to the PMOS stage, which will then start its computation. Does that make sense? So let's understand what we have just done here. We understood phi equal to zero case, right? Now we are understanding phi equal to one case. Let's quickly see. So in the first stage, this is my phi equal to one, my pull down, and this is my NMOS logic. Let's say there are two A and B inputs. And this is the output of that stage, which is going to the PMOS logic stage where this PMOS is now on because phi bar is zero, correct? Suppose this is the logic here and this is my V out. So this output can be easily given to any of these inputs. Let's see here. And this is an other input. So now suppose let's say my A and B both were one. So A and B both are one output is equal to zero because it's a closed path. This is on also this zero goes here. Suppose my C was also zero, both of this would be on. This is also on, so my output goes to high. And here we don't need any inverters and we can cascade our dynamic circuits back to back. This is avoiding the problem of race condition, so it's a NORA circuit. And only thing what we achieved here was we replaced the NMOS stage and we put it with a PMOS stage and we could get whatever we were looking at. So when phi is equal to one, both my stages will evaluate their inputs, but it will happen one after the other. First, the NMOS stage will evaluate, create an output which will go as an input to the next stage. If you want to understand another example of working of PMOS logic block, here also we can quickly see PMOS, NMOS given by phi and A and B connected in parallel. An output is taken between the PMOS logic and the NMOS logic. So when phi is equal to zero, Let's say phi bar here. So phi is equal to zero. That means phi bar is equal to one, which means this will be turned on and output will be pre-discharged to zero. So output is zero. Now, when phi equal to one means phi bar equal to zero, this PMOS transistor will turn on. And let's say A and B both were zeros as well. So all these PMOSes are on. It will pull the output towards VDD. So we have got V out equal to VDD. And we can similarly see for all the different cases of A and B, and identify our outputs. So this is the working of the PMOS logic block. What we could achieve here is nothing but we could eliminate our race condition. It's nothing but an aura circuit where you don't need an inverter, external inverter, like we need in case of domino circuits. Only thing what we need is an alternating NMOS stage and a PMOS stage. And when you connect so many NMOS and PMOS alternatively, you can get a pipeline structure. Pipeline structure means at one point of time, one is functioning. Pipeline structure is nothing but stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, where one is functioning with a new input 
other guy is functioning with its previous input, the third guy is functioning with its previous input, the fourth guy is functioning with its previous input, and all of them will work parallelly, which will help us to achieve faster operation or which will help us in increasing the throughput. Again, we are not getting into the details of throughput. Rate at which the output is produced will be enhanced. What you need to remember is NORA circuit helps us in a pipeline structure and also helps us to avoid the inverters. Now, NORA circuit also like dynamic circuits has their own problems. They also suffer from charge sharing and charge leakage. Charge leakage is a problem with dynamic circuits. We know that. We have studied that also. So avoid charge leakage is nothing but when my transistor is off, my when my PMOS, let's say this is a dynamic, right? Suppose A was 0, B was 1. V out and phi was also zero. Initially, phi had charged this to VDD. So technically, this has to hold its charge equal to VDD. But because this transistor being off, this is also off due to charge decay, this output node might tend to lose out on its charge. So there has to be some way in which we can hold this charge when my input is zero or in some way how I can hold my VDD. There comes the need of zipper circuits. Exactly same like NORA. See here, if you can observe. This was your NMOS stage, this was your PMOS stage. I've drawn exactly the same NMOS stage, PMOS stage. Only thing I've changed is I have changed all the clocks. So I have called the PMOS clock as 5 1 for the first stage and the NMOS clock as 5 2. And here I have called phi and phi bar. So here I've drawn the waveforms of the clock. So when phi is equal to 0, phi bar is equal to 1 and vice versa. So let's say phi is equal to 1 means phi bar equal to 0. My outputs are taken from here and output is taken from here, correct? So when phi is 1, this is on. When phi bar is 0, this is on. We know that and vice versa. Now what's going to happen is, pay attention for a minute. When phi is 0, at the same time, my signal psi 1 is also 0. So let's understand that case. Phi is 0, psi 1 is also 0. Great. We wanted that only correct when we designed it this way. We wanted both of them not to be on at the same time, right? When phi was 0, this was on. That means this was off. Exactly, I have designed it same way. Phi equal to 0, psi 1 equal to 0. So this is same, like we have it in dynamic. Same, I can explain it for psi bar, uh, phi bar and psi 2 also. The change is here. When phi is equal to 1, that means this is on. At that point of time in dynamic, because this also becomes 1, input this turns off. Here what is happening is psi1 is given a value VDD minus mod VTP. Let's say VDD is 1.8 and mod VTP is 0.8. Then this value is nothing but 1 volt. And suppose I have a switching threshold of 0.9 or if I say after 0.9 my transistor PMOS, I beg your pardon, after 0.8 which is the threshold voltage my transistor PMOS will turn on. Then I have made this PMOS transistor slightly on or I have kept this transistor slightly on. And when I keep this slightly on, even if all the NMOS inputs are low, that means my output has to keep itself precharged to VDD. But because of the dynamic problem, it can lose its charge. But here what's happening is because phi1 is slightly on, very, very close to cutoff, it's slightly on, it will ensure that it will hold the value of this output towards VDD. The similar explanation can be given here also. I have given my psi2 here not to be equal to zero but I have given it to be VTN and we know that at threshold voltage this NMOS transistor turns on. So it will be slightly on and that slightly on will ensure that we don't lose out on the charge on this capacitor as well. So in simple words, NORA circuit avoids the race condition in dynamic circuits. However, it has a problem of charge leakage. So we use zipper circuits where the circuit is exactly same like NORA. The only change is the change in the clock and we ensure that when in the evaluation phase, if the evaluation inputs are such that my output needs to stay to its pre-charge value, my transistors of pre-charge or pre-discharge are still kept partially on so that my output value is not lost. Hope you have followed NORA and zipper circuits. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.